Hello and welcome to Minecraft Hardcore Forever with SRJ26. Today we are going to find a stronghold and I'm going to show you how to triangulate. The first thing you need is an eye of ender, which I don't have. I have an ender pearl. So we've got to make a trip to the nether to get at least one more of those blaze rods. So let me cut away and I will see you there. Okay, so we've made it to the nether. And we are at our blaze farm. It isn't much of a blaze farm. It's not automated or anything, but it will do in a pinch. I'm going to block off my back here because I don't want anyone to surprise me. And at some point we ought to hear the wonderful sounds of blaze men spawning. Because there is our spawner up there in this little um, nether brick. Oh, there we go. So we gotta wait for one to come down here and chop it up to pieces. And we need at least, a, I'd like to get a couple of blaze rods. But um, I'm not gonna make you suffer through the whole process because that's not what this episode's about. So let me uh, cut away and I will cut back when I have a few blaze rods. Okay, so it took me uh, maybe five minutes, seven minutes, but I've got seven blaze rods and I am heading back. That is more than enough. So let's run on back. And next stop, whoa. Next stop is base. Alright, so we're back at the base. And there are two things I need to do. First of which is to prep a room that you guys have not seen. I don't think you've seen it um, because I haven't done anything in it. It's like the most boring room in my base. So we're gonna go uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and four there, and one, two, three, four, and we're gonna make four brewing stands. Why four brewing stands? Why such an incredible number? Well, because brewing is fun. And I've got a room dedicated to brewing. I was trying to figure out what to do with this room, and I finally figured out. So, four brewing stands. I've already got nether wart from, um, well, we're not doing brewing today. We are doing the end, uh, the stronghold. So, we take our ender, uh, we take our blaze rod and we get blaze powder. We take our blaze powder, we take our ender pearl, we make an eye of ender. Now, how do we get, uh, well actually let me, um, well I'll tell you a secret. I've actually already been working on this. Um, we're going to sail to an island where I will show you the first place that I have done, let me see, it's this way. Um, we're going to go to several far off locations and in these far off locations we are going to throw the eye of ender and we're going to look at how far it goes and in what direction and then we will mark that on um, well we're going to mark down the coordinates uh, so let me uh, fast forward now uh, we will see you at the desert island soon it is that one right there in the lower left corner so we'll see you there in a minute all right we are arriving at our desert island and if you notice that there are already some little pylons up there, you probably don't see them yet, but I will show you. Okay, um, when you throw an eye of ender, it goes in a direction towards the stronghold. Many of you already know this, uh, but you may not know about triangulation and how to actually do it. You might just get a whole bunch and then follow them. Well, what we do is we mark down this location. So we'll put down negative uh, 764 and 428. And then we're going to take this puppy and we're going to throw it. And it went that way? Why did it go that way? That's strange. Okay, sometimes it'll disappear into the nether, which is uh, inconvenient. But in previous tests, I've done it. Wow, that's so weird. All right, I've done it so it went this way. And I've done it so it went towards this pylon right here. Because I marked this down. I did a test. And I don't know why it goes to sometimes to one and sometimes to the other. I bet Jeb could tell me, but Jeb's not going to tell me. Uh, I'm going to surmise that maybe I'm not elevated enough, and we're going to we're going to get high. So let's try again. Oh, it is stubborn. Okay. Well, 
I'm going to show you the theory that what we do is we mark down the first location we, and we walked in the direction that it went. So we'd walk all the way down here and then we would mark down the next location. And you mark the coordinates for both. And I'm going to show you some screenshots of um, uh, with some like illustrations of what that would look like. Um, so I'm going to go, well I'll just show you right now. So the concept's pretty simple. Here's our map. We put down a dot where the uh, initial throw starts. Then we mark the place where the ender eye goes to. That makes up a vector, which is one line we draw on our map. Now you go to another location, hopefully far away. Mark where you throw the eye from. Then you mark again where the eye goes. And then that makes up another vector. It makes a line. And where those two lines intersect, well, that becomes your location where, in theory, the stronghold is located. Simple stuff. So I ran tests from several locations and I wrote down all the coordinates. Now the reason you want to use um, take care and use only a few eyes vendor and write down the numbers and you know be careful about it is that they do disappear sometimes. They go back into the end uh, and that's not a good thing. So um, I am going to now show you how I use those coordinates to triangulate. This might be boring for some of you, I apologize in advance if it is, but for some of you it might be a new concept. So uh, I'm going to try to show you on paper exactly what is involved, and then we're going to try to go to that location and we'll see if we can find ourselves a stronghold. Uh, if we can, that would be surprising because last time through it took a couple tries, but I have had success with this method. So um, let me cut to, well, cut to me. So I did eye vendor throws from these coordinates and they landed here, from these coordinates and they landed here, and from these coordinates way, way, way south of my base and they landed here. Now what this third column is, is I took the difference between each throw, each set of coordinates, x and z, and I multiplied them by 10. And what that did was that gave me a much longer vector to be able to look at. So I'm going to try to show you on paper here exactly what I'm talking about. Our first throw was here. It landed, you know, here, but I multiplied it out times 10 and get a vector like that. The second throw here, that way. The third throw is way down here. And that goes to there and we can draw a line like that. So that is where the stronghold is. Um, so we're looking at 600 and negative 600. And hopefully we will find the stronghold right there. And that's how you triangulate. As a side note, I want to mention that I am using graph paper that has been marked out with the x, y, and z coordinates so that I can actually look along my, my coordinates and figure out exactly where everything is. So if you use the coordinates and use graph paper, you can actually do this pretty accurately. All right, so we're back at the base. And we know that we need to go to 600 and negative 600. So we are going to go downstairs. And the reason is that we have tunnels that we have, I, have, I have dug um, that go in exactly the direction we want to go for like 700 blocks. So if we go 600 and then take a, I guess it'll be a right turn, um, we'll be able to go hopefully not too far before we reach where the thing's supposed to be. And they're big, so if we miss a little bit, we might still hit it. But um, I think it's this way. But anyway, let me uh, take us to the spot. So as you can see, we are at 600 blocks. So I'm going to stop right here and make sure I, I'm not being bothered by anybody. And we're going to go this way. Might as well do it the old-fashioned way and make a double sided a uh, normal shaft like I usually do. So I'm gonna I guess um, try to fast forward through most of this um, most of this mining but I will let you know when I get to 600 it'll be a while. 
All right, I've come uh, about 500 blocks to the to the X, <laughs> 500 blocks, I guess, to the west, and I think I've got to be close. But um, the thing is, the you know the the precision is actually not real good, but the strongholds are pretty big, so. Um, you know that that's a point in my favor. Hopefully, I actually got it right, and there is one here. But uh, I don't know. I'm hearing spiders, so that's uh, possibly a good thing. But um, I think I'm getting close, and I'm gonna keep on going. I'm gonna cut away, I guess, and I'll let you know if I get any closer and see any uh, any of that wonderful smooth stone brick. So uh, cross your fingers. Well, we found something. Uh, let me see. Uh, is it a ravine? So strongholds are sometimes found around ravines. Um, I think it might even be programmatic that they're spawned near them often. But I don't know what I got here. So uh, as nervous as I am, I'm just going to sort of cut a little ways up here. And let's see if we can make some sense out of this. Oh lordy, alright. Uh, let's get our... There we go. I don't want to fall in that. That would be a dumb way to die. Let's cover it up. I hear monsters everywhere, which is kind of good, but a little scary. So let's just go up here and see. Oh, hello. I'm hearing spiders everywhere, but that does not make a stronghold. What we need is a stronghold. Oh, <gasps> we found it! All right, look at that. That is a stronghold, boys and girls. Uh, a rather ugly underside of one, and I'm hearing lots of monsters. And I am not going to go any further right now, because we proved our point. You can indeed triangulate to find a stronghold, and I'm going to scoot on back to base and, I don't know, celebrate. Whoa! They're knocking down the doors. I'm running away. Um, so we've got our stronghold. Um, the next question is, what next? Uh, I'm going to sign off because you don't want to see me walk all the way back to base, but uh, we did it. We triangulated, we found the stronghold, and hopefully you weren't bored, bored to death and it was maybe even educational. Um, thank you for watching SRJ uh, Hardcore Forever. Um, this has been Steve Johnson. Comment, tell me if you like what you see, let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Uh, I've got a lot more I can do. But I gotta make an Ender Pearl farm, and I've gotta work on getting. Actually, I don't. Yeah, I do need blaze rods, and I do need Ender Pearl so that I can go in there, find that gate, and activate it, and get to the end and kill the dragon, and then set about trying to beat that high score that I got because 23,000 points is a lot. But I bet I can do more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye.